Hello and welcome to the third part of our lesson on 3D modelling within Rhino. This lesson is going to focus on how to turn your 3D model into 2D drawings. We're going to be looking at the make 2D function and how it can convert 3D geometry into a flattened 2D drawing. And we're also going to be introducing clipping planes which allow us to take section and plan cuts through our 3D models without damaging them in any way. It's a non-destructive form of cutting sections and plans into our models. At the end of the lesson we're then going to look at how to combine rendered shadows on geometry with 2D line drawing and we're going to be using Photoshop for this as well. So we're not just going to be working in Rhino in this session, we're also going to be moving into the Adobe Suite. Now we're going to start by simply taking and making a Make 2D view of our 3D model. You can see that I've now added in internal walls into this model. We've got our windows and doors from last session and our staircase so we're getting kind of a reasonable level of detail into the model now so at this point we could start making drawings out of our file and it might be that you want to do this for a tutorial or it's just for you to then work into by hand later on but we're just going to look at how to start doing that so make 2d is probably one of the most common functions you're going to be using when making drawings out of your models and it works by simply selecting the geometry you want to make the view of typing make 2d into your command line hitting enter and you'll have this make 2d drawing option box come up now a lot of these i won't really play around with but the important ones to note are always have your projection in your view there in your options i always maintain source layers and what this does it will make kind of keep the color of the layers you have on your lines when you do your make 2D and this makes it easy then to assign specific line weights to specific objects in your model. So it's quite important you tick that maintain source layers box. You don't want hidden lines on because it will show all the lines below bits of geometry and it makes the make 2D very complicated so I usually don't tick that and then for the rest of these I usually leave unticked for now but you can play around with those and see what each of them do if you're interested. So when you're ready just hit OK and it will take a little bit of time to load up depending on the complexity of your model and when it's done if you go out of your perspective view and into your top view what it's done is it's turned that 3d model into a flattened 2d drawing and it's flattened it onto the seaplane which is in your top view if i look at that in perspective you can see that it's kind of like a flattened drawing form there and that's pretty much it. You simply just have to run that function and it turns it into a 2D drawing. Now if I go to my layers, you can see that it's made a new Make 2D folder and all of those lines are now contained within that Make 2D folder. Because we ticked um, Maintain Source Layers, you'll see that it also has a kind of replica of my 3D layers up here with my walls, my windows, doors and floor and each of the elements that have been made into a drawing are still on their same layers. So I can then, if I wanted to, I could set line weights for each of these specific lines. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna put them back onto my 2D line work file because we're gonna to want to make this into a 2D drawing. And because we've already set up our line weights in the previous lesson in our 2D line work file, we don't have to redo that so I could select my walls I'm just going to right click on the walls layer and go select objects in my sorry external walls there and I'm going to put this on my elevation mid line because I want this to be slightly thicker then I'm going to lock that layer and just select everything else and change the layer to the elevation fin line. So all we've done is we've just taken those Make 2D layers, so there should be nothing left in there. We can just close that down now. And I've put them onto my previously made 2D line work layers, which have line weights already set up within them. Now if I then go to make a new layout page, I'm just going to make another A3 portrait page. Put this in the middle so we can see it and then turn on my print display
you'll see now that, that has line weights already set up and the windows are slightly thinner than the external walls there. So very quickly we can start to take our 3D geometry and turn it into a drawing. And we could then go and print that to PDF or print it out on a printer if we wanted to, just using the same technique as we did in the last session. Now, that's fine if you just want a kind of 2D drawing of a solid 3D model. But if you wanted to start taking section cuts or plan cuts through that, then we might have to start looking at using what's called clipping planes. Now, if we just rotate this around so we can see the model a bit clearly, and I'm just going to turn off my line work. Now, clipping planes are for a way to chop your model out without having to actually change any of the geometry in your model. So it's not like trim or split command, it's actually just a temporary viewing kind of tool to help you view what your model looks like on the inside. Now, I'm going to open up my four windows to show you this. And we're going to start by just making a clipping plane in the plan view so we can take a plan cut of our model. So if I just select this top view, type in clipping plane and you draw it out as a rectangle over your model like so and you can see as I've done that it's already chopped parts of my model in this top view now if I select that clipping plane which is this rectangle around the model I just drew and go to properties and under clipping plane properties here we can select the views that are being currently clipped by this plane so if I select the perspective view, you see now that that view is now being affected by this plane. We could also go on the front view, and you can see in the front view now that that's being affected. So we have control over which views are currently being clipped and which aren't, and usually you probably want just one view to be clipped, and then it allows you to kind of move the clipping plane around in the other views into that specific position. So let's say we kind of want to make another 3D view, but this time to have this section on. All we'd have to do now is if we wanted to make a drawing out of this, we can just select all the objects and the clipping plane, type in make 2D again, hit OK. Just let that load up. It might take a bit longer now we've got the clipping plane on because it's more vis geometry is visible. So if we go back to the top view, we can see there that it's now done make 2D and it's clipped our file for us. And what's great about using clipping planes is if you go onto your layers in that make 2D folder, you'll see that not only do we have our visible layers, but we also have the layers that are being intersected with the clipping plane. So this is effectively our cut line of our drawing. And this allows us to select these particular layers and make them thicker than the other layers on the drawing and give our section line a specific line weight. So it's really useful to use clipping planes for this because it allows us to easily isolate our cut line in, every, in all of our drawings we're doing. So before we start to do that, we're now gonna look at cutting a section through our drawing. So I'm gonna just delete this clipping plane and we're gonna draw one in this right hand view to cut a section down the middle of our model here. So I can select the right view again, type in clipping plane, draw that out, properties, select the frame, and just make sure it's only working in the right hand view, and then in the plan view actually, we can then move that to where we want it to be. So let's have it kind of going through this, partially through this staircase here. And when I'm happy with that, I can select the geometry in my view and do a make 2D. So we now have a section, a simple section through our model. And like we did before, we have our clipping plane intersection line, so our section lines and our elevation lines. So what I can now do is we can start to isolate out these section lines and elevation lines. So what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to hide the section lines, select all of these other lines 
and I'm going to change them on to just my simple elevation thin layer there. So because that's hidden, they've now disappeared. So then turn back on my section line, select these, and we're going to put those on my section thick line here. And they've now disappeared because that line, that layer is isolated and it's hidden. So now they're changed. I'm going to hide those layers and I'm going to turn back on my 2D line work. And you'll see now that we've got our layers already correctly assigned to our correct line weight. So we've got a thick section line going around there and a thinner elevation line. So then if I go to my layout page, and we actually already have that centered on there, which is good. You can see now that we're slowly starting to turn that into a sectional drawing. Now, Make 2D never kind of cuts your section perfectly how you want it, and it all depends on how you've modeled your geometry. You can see here I've got lines between my floors, which I might want to join up and get rid of this middle line. So you will always have a bit of drawing work to do after you've done your Make 2D, and never expect it to come out perfectly the first time around. So it might be that you want to sort of trim out these lines here, and usually I just then go around tidying up all these extra pieces and making the geometry a bit neater. So always expect to have that kind of extra job of tidying up your make two Ds once you're done to clean them, clean up the corners, the edges, and actually start to turn it into a proper drawing. The make two D should always be the kind of background layer or the skeleton, as it were, of your section drawing that you're then going to work into. So that's an introduction to using the Make 2D function in combination with clipping planes to start to create sections for your models. Now, what we can also do is we could start to combine this with rendered layers to add shadows onto our drawings. So we're going to give that a go with this particular section view. And we're going to try and add in some rendered shadows onto this view. To do that, we're just going to use Rhino's basic renderer. So if we go back to our perspective view and we're just going to show you quickly how this works and then we're going to apply it to our sectional view there. So we're going to do a quick test render of this using Rhino's default render engine. Now this is built into Rhino, you don't need any other programs to do this. And if you go up to render and go down to the current renderer, you'll see that it's selected Rhino render here, which is Rhino's kind of built-in render system. So if we just hit render preview, to give us a quick preview of kind of what it looks like if we render out this object. It will open up this new frame and depending on how quick your computer is it will do a quick kind of preview render which is very grainy of your model. Now you can see there's no kind of clear shadows, there's kind of a vague light and darkness and that's because by default Rhino adds what's called a skylight into the model which gives it a kind of vague ambient lighting source. What we want is we want quite strong direct shadows for this particular view. So to do that, we can add a, what's called a sunlight system into the model, and that creates a kind of artificial sun, which can give us direct shadows coming into our model. So the way I usually like to set that up is I go to Render, Render Properties, and this gives us all the current properties that are in our Rhino Render. Dimension and quality is quite an important one. And I think we're going to go back into that in more detail in the next lesson where we'll be looking at interior and exterior perspective views. But for now, I'll just make sure the DPI is at 300, which is good quality, and make sure the quality is on final quality there. But basically, the higher up your resolution, which is what this number here refers to, the longer your render will take to render, but the higher the quality. So just to put it into perspective, uh, photograph from an SLR camera might be sort of 4,000 to 5,000 pixels wide. So that's just your kind of the viewport size, which is usually the size of your screen, really. That's what that refers to. So we're just going to leave that as it is for the moment on our viewport. And then we're going to go down here to lighting. And you see it's got the skylight ticked on, which was that kind of ambient light that we saw when we did the preview render. We're just going to tick on sun, and then we're going to go into sun settings. Now, with the sun option on, you have the ability to actually pick a specific location that you want to mirror the sun of. Personally, I don't really like to use this because it's harder to control. 
I actually just prefer ticking on the manual control and therefore it allows you to place the sun in a specific direction. North on your model is usually pointing up on the y-axis. You can kind of see here that north is located pointing upwards on y and east is on x-axis. So you can relate that to the model you're making and work out exactly where north, south, east and west is in relation to your model. So I'm going to put my sun coming in from here for now. Do it slightly there actually. And this level here is the kind of degrees that the sun is above the horizon. So zero degrees would mean the sun is sitting right on the horizon. If you go below zero, it's nighttime, so you're not going to see any light at all. So make sure it's above zero. And I usually have it on about 45 degrees, usually to get some good shadows going on there. So once you're happy with that, hit OK. And we're just going to go OK here. And then we're going to go back to render and do a render preview of that and see how that's looking. So you can see now I've got much stronger shadows coming in on my model and it's looking a bit more defined. It's actually looking quite a bit bleached out on this side. So it might be that you want to play around with this gamma setting, which you can use to help get lighter and darker, but you can only do that in the final render. So we'll kind of do that when we get to that point. So when you're ready to go, I'm just going to slightly tweak that lighting a little bit before we do our final render, just to get some good shadows coming in from the right angle. Let's go back to the sun settings if you want to tweak it again. We'll just change it to there for now. So with that set, I'm going to go back to my right hand view. Now this has the clipping plane in, so this will actually render out when I'm doing my image. We're going to do a quick preview to see what that's looking like. That's looking okay. It will never look quite as good as the sort of 3D render because it depends on exactly where the sun's coming from. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pause the video and tweak the sun a bit and go back and forth using the preview and the sun settings to get a good sunlight coming into the model for this particular view. So, so we've now set up the sun so it's working relatively well in our render. So when you've got your sunlight settings set up correctly, you can then start to render the final thing. Now, in before you do this, you just want to check in your render properties what your resolution is. Um, for now, I'm just going to keep it on the viewport resolution, but if you're doing this for a final drawing, or something a bit more that you need a higher resolution for, you probably want to go for something like the 3000 by 2400 resolution there. So, but for now, I'm just going to go with the viewport. And like I said, we'll be going into resolution in a bit more detail later down the line. So with that set, just hit OK. And then when you're ready to render, hit the render button below render preview. Now, before I hit this, just something to bear in mind that if your computer is quite old or quite slow this is going to use up a lot of your computer power when you hit render so make sure you save your file before you render anything because it often has the ability to crash rhino files and break them in that way so save everything before you hit render and even all the other files that might be on your computer just because what rendering does is it takes all of your computer's memory and focuses on this one task of rendering these objects. So just bear that in mind before you hit go on this. But when you're ready, hit render and you'll see that the window render window opens up just like the preview, but this time it's gonna be much, much slower. And you can see that mine is still kind of taking time to load up and you can kind of see down in this bottom left-hand corner, the percentage it's got on. It gives you kind of a rough remaining time there as it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pause the video while this is loading up and we'll just wait for this to render out. So now the render is complete and you can see now we've got some nice shadows coming in on our section there coming through the window. We've even got one coming through that sort of porthole door we made in the previous lesson which is quite interesting and the model is being cut as per our clipping plane. You'll see there's also this little bit of grain come in in the floor plate and on the stairs. This is sometimes caused by Rhino Skylight, which is that default light it puts in. So sometimes I turn that off when doing some of these um, renders 
and you can usually get rid of that. Also, you can usually get rid of this in Photoshop as well. But for now, we're going to be going back into this rendering in, in more detail on a later lesson. So don't worry about this too much at this stage, but this will kind of do for now. Also, if you want to play around with the um, brightness and darkness of these shadows, we can use this gamma setting in the exposure panel on the left. If you just scroll back and forth, you see that you can make these a lot darker or a lot lighter. I usually like to go quite dark on the shadows and then I can play around with that a bit more in Photoshop. So that also helps get rid of that grain a bit more as well. So let's just go down there for now. And when you're happy with that, we can just go save up in the left hand corner and save this out as a JPEG. This is separate to your Rhino file, so saving your Rhino file won't save the render. So just bear that in mind that they're two separate things. And I'm just going to save this onto my desktop for now. Now what we're going to try and do is we're going to combine our 2D drawing we've made of this section in Rhino with our rendered shadow layer we've just rendered out. So I've got my 2D drawing set up here. Now. I'd recommend sort of working into this a bit more before you do this step, but for the time being we're just going to combine these two raw drawings together just to show you the process. So we've got our section set up, I'm going to right click, I'm going to print it to PDF, make sure it's outputted to Rhino PDF just like we did in the last lesson, and make sure the scales are one to one. And then hit print, and we're going to put that on the desktop as well. So with those two saved, I'm going to open up Photoshop. And we're going to import first our PDF drawing into Photoshop. It's important you do the PDF first before you bring in the rendered layer because you've set up the PDF to a specific scale and you might have the section set up at 1 to 100. So it's important you bring that in first to maintain the scale and then we can scale up our render view to that drawing. So I'm just going to drag that in, drop it on top there. You see that it comes in without a background, so it might be that you want to give it a background so you can see these lines a bit more clearly. I usually just get a white colour and fill it with the paint bucket tool on a new layer below that one like so, so I can see those lines a bit more clearly. Now we're going to bring in our rendered layer. Here. And you'll see that it's a lot smaller than the image we've brought in with the PDF. And this is all to do with the resolution and output size we've done our render at. So by default, this is will come in quite small and we'll need to scale it up to match our image. Now if you just, I just drag and dropped that into my file so we need to place it just by hitting this tick button here and we're going to leave it underneath the line work for now and what we're going to do is we're going to scale this drawing up to match our line work. Now the easiest way to do this is I'll start by just scaling it a little bit so we can see goes and we need to find a common point between the render and the line work so I'm going to use this corner of this slab up here and we're going to just match those up like so. Then with the render layer selected I'm going to hit Control T which is transform and we're going to tick on this little box up here in the top left hand corner which is greyed out at the moment. What that does is it gives us this crosshair on our transform selection and this specifies the center of our transform so we want to specify that as that common point that both of these images share so up here with that specified we can now hold down the alt key drag from the corner keeping our image in the same aspect ratio by either holding shift or if you're on a later version of photoshop you don't actually need to hold shift anymore and you can just drag it out and you'll see that it's scaling from that corner we've specified. So all we need to do now is drag it out until our render lines up with our line drawing. Now I'm going to do this slightly roughly but once you're done that's pretty much on there. It might be that you want to tweak it a little bit more. 
there you go so now our line drawing you can see it's over the top of our rendered view and it might be that we then want to just decrease the fill color of that rendered view so we can see the line drawing a bit more clearly and this is a very quick way to start to build up more detail in your drawings and the beauty of this is is that you could then go back to Rhino and if you leave your layout page as it is and you start to draw in more detail in this plan so maybe you tidy up some of these floor plates you add in some people maybe some furniture and extra bits and pieces in if you then export out this view again as it is you can then just drop it back into your Photoshop file and the shadow layer will already be in the right place so it's very quick and easy to update that and add in more detail so that's all we're covering in this lesson we've looked at how to do a simple make 2d of a 3d model how to use clipping planes to start to take sections of plan cuts through our model and then also how to start to combine these with rendered layers and moving forward we're going to be looking at a lot more at bringing in the adobe suite of software so illustrator and photoshop and how to combine these with rendered views with line work you've made in rhino and other bits of geometry to start to really kind of add character and bring your drawings to life in that way Thanks for listening.